So good morning, everyone. Yeah. So along with the last presentation, yeah, today we are going to talk about electrical conductivity measurement. So for um, memorizing your old history, yeah, I'll start from this point. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this yeah we have we can catabolize our biomaterial at insulator and semiconductor and metallic, which means conductive material. And then when you look at our biological tissue, they are similar with the semiconductor as a, as a unit of gmm per centimeter. So this is the 10 to minus 4, 10 to minus 2. So along this uh, conductivity, uh, our tissue, including lung, heart, muscle, liver, brain, and skin and bone, even bone, they are in the semiconductor area, gmm per centimeter. But when you culture your cell on TCP, polystyrene here, they are almost insulated, which means that they cannot, uh, they cannot move any electrons. So which means this is not biomimetic condition. And then when you think about the metallic, uh, one certain time or more highly, they are conductive. So copper, bismuth, iron, and graphene. So when you think about certain biomaterial and their composition, you can also consider this electrical conductivity. And then um, when you think about this, most of the metal, they have very good conductivity. But, but when you think about the titanium, actually the titanium, the outer most surface consists of titanium oxide, TiO2. TiO2 is non-metal, TiO2 is ceramic. So this is considered as a semiconductor. So TiO2 is categorized in here. And then when you think about the most of the polymer, actually most of the polymer is insulator. Yeah, but certain polymer like PPR, PA, NI, and P dot, this kind of three polymer is well-known electroconductive biopolymer. So when you look at this polymer in certain paper, you can imagine, oh, they want to utilize this bioelectrical polymer for their tissue regeneration or certain purpose. Yeah. And then you should think about this point, how you mimic your biomaterial to have similar conductivity to this, your tissue of interest. So yeah, this is the example of five electrical conductor silver, gold, copper, steel, even seawater, okay? And electric insulator, rubber, glass, oil, diamond, dry wood. So you can, yeah, this is some conductivity at gmm per centimeter. So you can see one more time, metal, most of semiconductor, including TiO2, most of the just ceramic or polymer incorporate here. And then you can see this is a conductivity and this is a resistivity. Oh, what is the meaning of these two one? So more conductivity means more, electri more electrical conductivity, which means less resistivity. Okay? So this is a reverse unit. So less resistivity. In here, they have metal and the middle, ceramic and third kind of composite and then higher resistivity, this is the insulator. So you can yeah, approximately understand resistivity and conductivity. Okay. In detail, the resistivity was shown like this. For example, let's look at the four proof machine. Four proof means they'll use one, two, three, four proof to measure their resistivity of sample. So inner to prove they measure voltage, outer to prove they measure current. So, uh, so the basic condition is over 40 millimeter diameter and below 400 micrometer thickness. If you have this kind of sample, you can measure the sheet resistance of this sample. So how can you obtain the sheet resistance? So sheet resistance 
you know v in ir v equal ir right and then v equal ir and then you can know the v and i because this machine they want to gather certain conductivity current or voltage yeah okay anyhow yeah let's show one more time of this video This is one, two, three, four proof. This is your sample. Yeah, the diameter or area should be larger, at least larger than this four proof. And then you can contact this four proof to your sample. This not penetrate, cannot penetrate things. So when you look at this one, set up. So they range their current, target current, they fix the current and then they want to measure the voltage and the thickness of your sample and then they achieve some value how much of voltage was applied to get certain current. What is the current? This is 20, uh, 15 milliampere. So when they approach 15 milliampere, this is ampere, so milliampere is 0.015, and then they measure the certain voltage like this, and then from this voltage and current, they can gather sheet resistance as well as conductivity. Okay, so this is a basic concept of this four-point proof. So anyhow, you can acquire this acquire this uh, voltage, a uh, current, and then you can multiply this. Uh, so voltage divided by current is resistance, right? So resistance multiply correction factor. Correction factor is uh, absolute value. So point this four point machine normally. 4.53 and then you can get sheet resistance as ohm per square okay so we can say that uh, ohm multiply correction factor is sheet resistivity as a ohm per square and when you acquire the sheet resistivity and then you already know the sample thickness using Bernier calipers and then multiply their thickness and then you can get ohm per meter. Okay, so the unit is ohm per square, and then multiply meter is ohm per meter. So when you up multiply this thickness as a millimeter, so you can say ohm per millimeter because this square doesn't have any value. Okay, and then the conductivity is the reciprocal of resistivity. Okay, so when you reverse this resistivity and then you can acquire gmm per meter and then this is some uh, 100 gmm per centimeter uh, sorry this is 100.01 gmm per centimeter right. I have changed like this
Okay, so this is a little bit complicated, and then um, if you study this one, you can know what I, what I mentioned. And then, so that is, that is why uh, from this four point machine, many people measure your sample's conductivity. So, this is an example. So, let's see this paper, they mention P9. You are familiar with that? Pi 9 polymer. So, zero means without any pi 9, but electroconductive polymer incorporated, they will show more conductivity. So, normally people mention as GM per centimeter. So GM per centimeter and the milli GM per centimeter is 100 times less unit. Okay. So you can see this uh, 30 milli GM per centimeter and then this is 1.1 milli GM per centimeter. So when people use this kind of very small range, people observe very good event in terms of this generation. And then this is some Dr. G's uh, result. Dr. G make this kind of very good conductivity material, like over 100. This is this is a G, not milli G, so which means that more than 10,000 times more conductivity than this kind of material. So we expect this material can have some beneficial effect for neuro or tissue regeneration. And then this is some, yeah, so you can see this table as based on the material, resistivity as ohm per meter, and then their reverse value, GMM per meter. Okay, so when ohm is reversed, and then they convert it as G, and then meter is per meter. Conductivity, so when you exactly reverse this value, you can see this value. And maybe last time I will I did mathematics for you guys. So look at this GMM per meter around this, and then when you look at the sea water around 0.5 GMM per meter, and then yeah, other things. So always you have to think about based on the sea water. Actually, sea water can be considered as your body fluid. Okay, so this is some, how can I say, your media conductivity. You can see like that. But let's say your body, your tissue is semiconductor, which means they have certain conductivity, and then your body fluid also conductivity. So the electron can move through the substrate, through the ECM, as well as body fluid. But when you culture your cell on TCP, what will happen? Just electron cannot transfer through the substrate. That is why only through the media, the electron can penetrate. So which means this is not biomimetic condition. That is why when you make some kind of transparent, which means, which means visible, and the electroconductive material as a culturing tools, you can be a rich person. Hmm. That is a dream of the biomaterial scientist to make Electroconductive by a polymer, which is visible, yeah. and then you can use that biopolymer or any other biomaterial for culturing the cell. So sometimes people uh, show like this milli ohm per square, and then so actually this square is not uh, my function unit. This is a real unit. So you can sometimes ohm per square or ohm per this sort of square, right? Yeah, this is a real unit. Yeah, you should not be misunderstood. Real unit. So, so, so this is some uh, resistivity, right? Resistivity. So when you, when you reverse this resistivity and, and then when you uh, multiply the thickness and then reverse it, and then you can get electroconductivity. So this is the example of aluminum. So aluminum thin film, you have this one. And you know their thickness, right? And then you can gather resistivity, yeah, ohm per meter per square. Sometimes they omit the unit. And then you know the thickness, so you can multiply this and this, and then and then 
you can get this milli ohm per square yeah, ohm per square ohm, ohm, ohm per meter and then you reverse sorry yeah, this thickness and resistivity you multiply and then you can get this shoot resistivity Uh, sorry, yeah. Shoot, sorry, shoot resistivity you acquire from the machine, and then shoot resistivity multiply film thickness, and then you can get electrical resistivity, and then reverse it conductivity. Okay, so I attach, yeah, at a simple way. This is their example. So, yeah, four point they have assumed, okay. And then the four point spacing is one millimeter, and the film mix is less than 0.1 millimeter, should be fine or so. Okay, and then, and then they also have some certain range of area. And then to convert ohm per square to gmm per meter, you need to measurement thickness because this ohm per square can be obtained, ohm per square can be obtained by the machine. And then you multiply the thickness. And then, yeah, this is uh, how I described before. Okay. So let's say uh, you measure 25 ohm per square and film thickness is 120 nanometer, and then 25 and film thickness and then nanometer, so can be converted as a meter, so 10 to minus 9 power, and then reverse. This is some resistivity. Resistivity, when they reverse, we can get conductivity as a gmm per meter. Okay? So please con uh, maintain all parameter as a meter and then later you can convert to a centimeter. That's better. So this is the rear machine of a uh, four-point machine. So in material loom, next to the water vest and next to this, between water vest and this Ventilator, you can see this machine. Yes, and then this, you can see this bulb here. So if you want to measure this one, you can ask Dr. Rajendra with Kapil, with one of coffee, they can help you to measure. And then you have a simple way to measure the electric conductivity using LED measurement. So Sometimes you can see, show your value. Oh, I have this electric conducting material. But is there another way? Maybe more simple way? This is your material. And then this is your uh, minus and plus polar. And then you can conduct, you can contact this and this and LED light. When this, when this material has electrical conductivity, it will show light. When they have don't have the connectivity, it will not show any light. Okay, so people always use this kind of LED measurement device for proving our material has real electrical connectivity, not as a value of gmm per centimeter, gmm per meter, but also this kind of yeah, good images. So sometimes you can measure without liquid, right? Without liquid or DW, DW doesn't have any ions. So when they have done it, when they doesn't have any ions, what will happen? So and then this this LED can measure real conductivity of material without moisture, without electrons. But sometimes you can measure DW emerging and then tissue absorbance tapping, and then you can measure. So which means under moisture condition. Yeah. Even though this DW doesn't have any ions, but they have very small ion H plus or OH minus, but not Na plus Cl minus. So depending on which solution you pre-emerge pre your sample, you can measure different condition, even in LED or even in four point point proof. You know what you can think what is your real condition of your biome your body maybe your, your real condition is this solution when they have certain salt and then they have certain ion and then you can measure their 
electroconductivity after emerging in DW or in certain PBS, HBSS, or even media. And then you remove, the tissue, remove their solution using tissue observance. So, which means that uh, in that case, you need some strong, strong, um, how can I say, control group. So, as I told you before, seawater and media, they have also electrical conductivity. So, which means that even though your material doesn't have any conductivity, you can measure something. So, like PTFA film, you use as a negative control and then merge in GW or your PBS and then using tissue paper, you, you, you remove it and then measure their conductivity. And then you can measure in the same way for your material of interest. And you can compare. Especially when you measure the your conductivity after pre-emerging, you need some strong control group. But sometimes they omit this kind of things, pretreatment in the papers. Yeah. So there is why some people say one gmm per centimeter is good, or some people say 0 0.01 is good, something like. So this is some example. So Dr. Kapil, yeah, using this four-point proof, and then measure CNT incorporate PCL fiber conductivity as a gmm per meter. So he can get, depending on the concentration of CNT, they can get more electric conductivity. As you can expect, CNT is very high conductive material. So, and the color is like this, 0 0.15, 25, 0.51, and then you can also this kind of aided line. And then how you measure the CNT amount in PCF polymer using TGA. Yeah, last week I show you. So this CNT cannot, uh, CNT cannot evaporate until 800 degree. Maybe one over 1000 degree they can evaporate it. That is why uh, we can measure this around 400. This is some evaporation temp temperature for PCL. So, and then the remaining amount is from the CNT amount. So we can confirm the how much of CNT is incorporated here and incorporated here, and then what is their electrical conductivity. Okay, here you can say uh, this is electrical LED measurement conducted by one millivolt one millivolt of the DC direct current. And this is uh, another example. Yeah, also, we, this time we are using reduced graphene oxide. As you know, graphene is very highly conductive, but graphene oxide is less conductive. When they are reduced partially to graphene, which, which means their conductivity is maintained. So also we are using four-point brew machine, and then we measure their conductivity. So like, like I said, uh, we can gather 0.5 gmm per meter. Yeah, but this is uh, quite less than yeah, this 2.5, okay? And then we incorporate this reduced graphene oxide in PCL, a certain amount, 3 to 24 weight percent, and this is their morphology. Yes. So if you develop any uh, electroconductive material, you have to measure the Four, you, you have to measure the conductivity using four-point machine. So, just, so for your memory, when you measure this electro four-point proof, sheet, resist, sheet resistance you can acquire, right? And then sheet resistance multiply thickness, you can gather resistivity. And when you reverse resistivity, you can get conductivity. Okay. So summary of the last week and this week. Yeah. So using this machine, you can gather grass transition temperature and tissue crystallization temperature and melting temperature. You can gather. 
using TGA. TGA is how you remember T thermal gravity, gravity analysis. This is the golden standard of thermal analysis. You can change the temperature and then only you can gather the gravity. And then you will know drug and polymer loading amount. Okay. And then for electroconductivity, biomaterial, you can measure four point proof and then get sheet resistance, multiply thickness, resistivity, reverse resistivity, conductivity. And then as a visualized image, you can get LED machine. And then for this uh, DHC and TGA, recommend to contact Link Center. They have a good operator. In our first probe, we have this machine, but not function very well. And then this four point probe LED, you can get from the material loop. And then, especially this uh, LED machine and four point probe, Dr. Kapil and Rajendra, they can do. So you can contact them to measure. Okay, so you guys have any question? This on per C factor? This one, you mean? Number two, resistivity. Resistivity. Okay. The first term is on per uh, meter square and time symmetric. Time? Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is not time. Uh, Thick times multiplies the, the metric should come to on by metric. You mean this line, right? Yeah. So on per square, actually they don't have any value. Okay, so even though they measure square, so they uh, regard this some infinity. So you can just simply say ohm. You have only ohm, and then you multiply certain thickness as a meter, and you can get ohm per meter. But so if what the square stands for? This one. So this is um, how they describe ohm per square or ohm per real rectangular. Uh, so maybe people will not uh, distinguish this ohm per square and real ohm as a resistivity. So when they uh, mention about the especially sheet resistivity, uh, they consider sheet is an infinity area. So that is why they mention like ohm per square. Uh, square means not real certain unit, just imaginary unit, something you can think about. Just for the description. Yeah, yeah, a kind of description. To so distinguish uh, re sheet resistivity and then just normal resistivity as your uh, R. Uh, R. Not RS. RS is uh, resi sheet resistivity, but normal R is resistivity. And then, yeah, this, this is how they describe. And then you can multiply thickness of your own material, and then you can get real value on per meter, or on per centimeter, on per millimeter. But if you convert the value to resistivity conductivity, better to use on per meter first. On per meter? Ah, uh, sorry, on times. times meter, sorry, on times meter. And then in the reverse, this on is in the below, in the meters below, and actually so, one divided divided by ohm is converted as g. Yeah. So we can get g mm per meter. Okay, yeah. today I have a very short talk. And then maybe next week I have a last presentation about certain XPS or other analysis. And then two weeks later, maybe best will start his lecture, her lecture about some biomaterial measurement. Okay, thank you.